of what's happening here is just to move them into an area. But things can change very, very quickly. If you're just joining us 20 minutes before the top of the 2 o'clock hour, I'm Anna Ritas Rodriguez alongside Nick Giovanni and Cheryl Fiandaka. We've got Mike LaCrosse on the ground in the Boston Common, as well as um, Christina Hager and Tiffany Chan. We've been bringing you uh, the events that have unfolded today, a number of rallies uh, in the city of Boston. What started as a counter-protest to a free speech rally that was supposed to begin at noon Today on the Parkman Bandstand, that rally associated with the Free Speech Coalition has since fallen apart. Boston Police Department, as of a few minutes ago, confirmed that that rally is now over. Organizers and those associated with it have left the bandstand. Right now, we're looking at images of police trying to push back an unruly crowd. Right. It looks as though they're trying to get them to move in, in, in a way that they don't want to move because they're coming at the police as the police are pushing them away. So um, we've already seen what looked to be at least one person getting arrested mm -hmm. um, as to whether or not these folks are going to go on their way or whether this, is, this is, confrontation will continue. Um, we're just going to have to keep an eye on this. Um, I, but, it, but it's clear that at least one person was taken into custody a few minutes ago based on this. And it looks as though maybe someone is in the midst of this trying to have cooler heads prevail. But as you can see, when the police are moving you this way and you're facing them, um, that's usually not a good plan. And Commissioner Evans spoke about um, just historically and statistically the types of uh, violent attacks or attacks relating to violence that we see in these protests often come from people who are not from around here, who are not associated with these groups. We've seen so far the counter protest that was organized in part by members of the NAACP and the Black Lives Matter, the local chapter. They've been very peaceful. We have heard from uh, parents who came out there with their babies. They're literally carrying them in, in, right. in backpacks. And we've heard from teachers and from people who work in Boston. And uh, Tiffany Chan walked with them from the Reggie Lewis Center in Roxbury all the way to Boston Common. It's about a two-mile walk. And other than that, that man that we saw being escorted out with that T-shirt, nothing else transpired. This is the first we've seen a, a real clash between police and just a number of people. Right, exactly. Because and BPD, I, as you were talking about, just going into this, trying to take a soft approach, more than 500 BPD officers, a couple hundred state troopers, right. all weaving themselves within the crowd as they marched from Reggie Lewis Center over to the common here. And you, you saw just everyone flowing smoothly, peacefully. And now this is a matter of, you're, you're thinking basically just trying to clear at least this yeah. street, but potentially part of the common. And so it, it appears that the Beacon Street side of the common is peaceful. And this is just one area where there looks like there's some type of altercation or some type of concern. But this also looks like this is not the common. And they're trying to move. People are leaving the area. So as to whether they're leaving the area and then concerns of breaking out between groups and, and tensions with the police. But you can see they're, I mean, they're, they're pretty good at being able to shut these things down mm -hmm. pretty quickly and having people disperse. Also, once you get people into a larger area, it's not so confining. And maybe that plays a role as well. But, you know, I think for the most part, the free speech rally didn't turn out to be anything near what everybody nice. thought. They had a couple of dozen people, maybe, if that. It ended way before the 2 o'clock deadline. Um, they said that they did have some speeches, but no one really heard them. Um, but the counter protests were much more significant than probably were realized. They were anticipating up towards of maybe 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like those numbers were pretty close, maybe, because we saw all the groups moving together and there were two counter protest groups mm -hmm. and they're all merging on the common all centered around the right side of your screen there at the bandstand and now you are seeing that it appears to have broken up quite a bit even talking about the counter protesters let's go back out to michael cross who was there on the ground for us mike what, what are you seeing now nick we're over here uh at the corner of Tremont Street and uh, Boylston just beyond the common and as you can see in our live pictures here we do have Boston police officers in riot gear with helmets 
blocking off the intersection. We just arrived over here, so we're trying to get some information from folks. This is the edge of the common. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and try to talk to folks that have been here. Sir, do you have a second? Channel uh, 4? I suppose I do. Uh, how long have you been down here in this portion of the common? It's been about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Take yeah. me through the last 15 minutes. What have you observed with seeing these uh, police officers in Riot? 50, I mean, 15 minutes since I've been to the common. I started, be, I just got here. Okay. I was on Twitter. Someone said there's something happening at Boylston and Tremont Street. I came. They said, uh, um, uh, without putting too fine a point on it, that uh, anyone who came to the free speech rally is in a paddy wagon right now. I don't know anything else. So you have seen people being loaded up into... into I have not, have no. not. Okay. We are hearing from folks that have been down here that they've seen uh, folks being arrested and putting into some police vehicles. We're going to try to get an exact number on that. But again, we are here at the corner of Tremont Street and Boylston on the edge of the Boston Common at the Emerson, uh, on the edge of the Emerson campus. Things are kind of at a standstill here now. You can see dozens of Boston police officers in full riot gear. This intersection is on lockdown right now. Just trying to keep the crowds moving at this point. We're going to see if we can go ahead and get some more information and get back to you guys as soon as we can. Mike, can you hear us? Go ahead. Mike, can you hear us? Because we're just wondering whether I can hear you, Carol. Okay, can, are, are, you, are these still more? Or You've been listening in to our coverage there of our Boston affiliate WBZ. This is a free speech rally at Boston Common, and there was it was dubbed as a free speech rally. The question and the worry was that possibly white nationalists might take over and there might be members of the KKK neo-Nazis attending. So to counter all of that, counter protesters ended up arriving at the scene, announcing they would be there, some folks from Black Lives Matter as well. They're expecting as many as 30,000 counter protests to sort of uh, march peacefully, is the sense. You see Boston police there in full riot gear, batons, fully clothed and ready to intervene as needed. This is something that the city has been worried about. I want to bring you back to our local affiliate there, WBZ, for their coverage. T station. Line station. And you can see uh, police officers there lining up again, creating a barrier. Uh, you're taking a live look at, is this Charles Street or uh, Tremont? It's tough to get a bearing without a wider picture of where we are. The officers on Tremont are on the move. Can we go back to Mike's camera um, and just uh, show the folks what's been going on? So it looks like you've got, you know, a significant police presence here with uh, the specially trained police officers and they've got the motorcycle unit out. Those are always used for crowd control as well. So it looks as though this intersection is being pr is problematic for some reason, whether or not they've got two groups here that are causing issues or folks that won't leave the area. But um, it looks like they, and they look like they have bicycle police officers there as well. So there's a very significant police presence. Well, that is sorted out elsewhere on the common. It seems to be the, the the mood out there from what Mike had described, what Christina Hager had described, really exhaustion for one from everyone dealing with the heat out there, uh, but also a celebratory feel what seemed to be the uh, the prevailing feeling from uh, the counter rally uh, groups there. Let's uh, let's go back out to uh, Tiffany Tiffany Chan there with us on the ground with one of the, the counter rally groups there. Tiffany, what are, what are you seeing? I'm going to ask her about it, but don't show her. Tell you exactly where I am so you know the location. I'm right by Beacon Street, the Beacon Street side of the Boston Hall, and I see a small stage that's being set up. It seems like they're waiting for their speakers to get to the Boston Common. So far, everything's calm here. I'm, I'm seeing nothing aggressive, nothing violent. Is he on the phone? Standing around. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Keep going, keep going. Yeah, so I see a lot of people on their phones. Seeing, you know what the next step is, is there seems to be no type of direction but i can tell you nothing aggressive nothing violent just people crowding around this small stage right near beacon street inside of the boston common from where i'm standing i can tell you it seems to be a divide um, between the people the counter protesters on the side that's closer to beacon street and possibly where the free speech rally was closer to the Tremont Street side. So I, from where I'm standing, there seems to be a clear divide. Nothing violent going on here, though. I do see police coming down in motorcycles. Um, from what I hear, Boston Police, they're trying to end this event now. It seems like people don't really know where to go. Are they staying? Are they leaving? They're on their phones trying to locate their friends. But I can tell you hundreds of people gathered around this small stage inside of the Boston Common by Beacon Street, right by the State House. They're here. From what I hear, they're waiting for their speakers to come through. 
to get inside of the Boston Comet. Tiffany, thank you. You are taking a look at live images just outside the State House. You can see a line of uh, police officers blocking the entrance to the State House, trying to keep people away from potentially uh, doing any property damage um, and, and protecting uh, Beacon Hill there. We want to bring in uh, former police commissioner Ed Davis. He's on the phone. Sir, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. From what you've been seeing, the images uh, on the screen, what have you been able to gather? Well, it appears as though uh, the, the original event has ended. Um, the police have escorted uh, the people who pulled the permit. Uh, they only numbered it 50 or 60 people, and they've got them out of the area. Now you've got a crowd there of 15-plus uh, thousand people. And the question is, does this crowd... Uh, stay peaceful and and disperse peaceably over the next couple of hours? Or does this crowd become a mob and turn their attention on the police as, as the problem? So the police right now just want everybody to leave. And um, at some point in time, uh, they may have to declare this an illegal assembly uh, and, and start to uh, move people out of the area or, or make arrests. But at this point in time, um, everybody's hoping that this maintains uh, peaceful and, um, and and it really you know if it does this is a real comment on on the city of Boston and um, and how um, we can uh, peacefully uh, show our uh, our support uh, or, or not for a uh, for an issue so we'll see how this develops hopefully uh, this everybody disperses and and this will remain as peaceful as it's been. Ed, we saw a what looked to be um, a confrontation with some folks um, and the police who were dressed in and what appeared to be riot gear, and now they've kind of like closed off an intersection. Can you talk a little bit about the tactics that they may be needing to use to get the crowd to move or to get the crowd to do what they need the crowd to do? Yes, uh, I, uh, I haven't been able to see the for the last 30 minutes, but I can tell you this. Uh, there were people in that crowd uh, that were all dressed in black that had uh, their face uh, covered up. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? We lost you. Okay, um, he's back. Okay, you're back. Go ahead. Ed, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear okay. you now. Yep. Okay. Sorry, go right ahead. These are, these are anarchists and black bloc people who uh, have really uh, come there to cause trouble. So. Those are the individuals that uh, people are focused on. They, we have under, I'm sure that there are undercover officers in the crowd uh, that are informing the command post where these guys are and what they're up to. And so, so in terms of what they need one to area or another. So in terms of what they need to do to get this crowd to move, um, how, how do they do that? Well, the, uh, the, it's prescribed in Massachusetts law. You give an announcement that it's an illegal assembly and you tell people to disperse, and then you bring in uh, what they call uh, public auto platoons that are that are trained to uh, get in a line and push the crowd in a particular area. But you always want to push that crowd in an area where they can uh, where they can escape, where they can get away. You don't want to bottle them up. You don't want to make it more difficult. You want to you're trying to lessen the uh, uh, the, the confrontational part of this. Um, and you know, there's always a danger here of. Uh, when, when the actual protest is over, activists in the crowd who are anti-police turning their their uh, their ire and, and uh, you know temper at uh, at police officers who are simply there to maintain the peace. So we'll see how this goes. Thanks very much, Ed. Uh, we're going to hand it out to uh, Mike Lacrosse. Mike, do you have an update for us from where you are? Sure, we'll see here at the uh, corner of Tremont and Boylston Street. We've seen the police presence increase here in the intersection, although the riot uh, police in riot gear have moved on. I want to bring in Sharon from Worcester. She was here for about a half an hour and observed. Take me through, Sharon. What did you see? What, talk, talk to me about the arrests that were made. I saw a lot of the counter protesters not letting out some of the people from the free speech rally, and about four or five people were arrested. Some justified, some not so much. You told me that you did see some people up on the building. Describe that for me. There was a couple of people up on the building. Um, they told one, the cops told one of them to get down, and he did. And then he put his hands on the behind him, and it scared him. And about seven or eight cops took him down. 
Okay. All right. So there are about four or five arrests here at the corner of Tremont and Boylston. You can see here they're now bringing in heavy equipment. Heavy equipment is being moved here at the corner of Boylston and Tremont Street, which is the ed edge of the Boston Common. A lot of folks have been gathered here as these protests broke up. We are told that there are some members of the free speech rally that were trying to get out of this area, and they were blocked by members of the counter protest. That's where some of the scuffles happen, and that's where the, some of the arrests were made. Again, we're here at the corner of Boylston and Tremont Street. Heavy police presence as the crowds uh, begin to disperse here on the Boston Common. Back to you guys and see you. Mike, thank you, sir. Cheryl, that was that was really kind of the concern it sounded like going into this with with such a, a concentrated police presence around the common itself. How would you handle these crowds once they got away from the common and the outskirts? Right, and that's one of the things that they're now doing. You're going to see the police will move throughout the area, like the train stations that are open, the T stations that are open, um, the side streets that they'll try to keep them on or keep them away from. Um, and as Ed Davis mentioned, he he said that you know you have to be able to have people leave and be able to give them an escape. You can't just bottle them up and that's where you can run into problems. So hopefully we will watch this unfold and people will peacefully go about their day and leave having felt like they had their voices heard and this ended up being a peaceful protest that Boston can be proud of. We certainly hope so. We are nearing the end of this special report. We want to thank you for your time. We appreciate your time from all of us here at WBZ. Cheryl Fiendaka, Nick Giovanni, I'm Anna Ritis Rodriguez. We thank you for watching. We're going to continue to bring you updates throughout the day. You can log on to CBSBoston.com. We'll be streaming there and we'll be back on WBZ News at 6. Well, we've been watching our local affiliate there, CBS Boston, WBZ, their coverage of the riots, the, the protests, I should say, in Boston. The concern was that they could turn violent. There have been uh, intermediate sort of uh, clashes every now and then, intermittent clashes every now and then. Uh, several arrests, uh, particularly in Boylston and Tremont area, We're talking 15,000 people that are still in this area, according to police. We're going to continue to monitor this and all the coverage here on the ground there with our affiliate. We're going to turn back to WBZ again. Actually, we are going to stick with this for, for a second here. The, again, we're watching the protests and the clashes in Boston between the police. There haven't been a lot of violence, but there have been these growing number of people coming to the streets here. If we can get that aerial look back up again from the helicopter. Uh, this is the shot there of the helicopter, wide shot of the scene there. But you see the crowds monitoring Black Lives Matters. This is from earlier in the day. Uh, and counter protest to counter what was supposed to be a free speech rally. And at that rally, the concern was that members of the KKK and neo-Nazi groups might, in fact, somehow uh, come and, and turn this violent. So police have been watching this, and we are watching all the live areas. We've got cameras and reporters throughout the scene. We're going to watch our local affiliate, WBZ, throughout the day when they return. You're streaming CBSN.